Hi. Uh, Hi, I'm Shomin Bhattacharya. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Vault Medical Records. And by the way, Noel, I live in uh, Frisco, so it'll be awesome <laughs> to have it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll tell you before, before, before we go into the slide uh, in detail, so Vault Medical Records is really an electronic health platform. The primary mission is to be affordable and connect patients, clinicians, and the data together. Now, the genesis of the idea started back in October of 2014 with a personal experience where uh, a very good friend of mine's mother was admitted to a rehab unit for 30 days. And uh, the first three days when I was there to, to visit her, and uh, <clears throat> the therapist will come in, ask exactly the same questions as a doctor would and as a nurse would, as a nurse tech would, as a radio te radiology tech word, exactly the same questions. And it was very frustrating for her because it, it just seemed like you have, you have taken my information, why is it so complex? Now, when you look back and you peel off the surface, what you'll start noticing in this space is people um, who are in the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, the therapists, everybody, they are working as a team. They are, they are in a huddle, they know about the patients, they are communicating, they are talking, they are always discussing about the patient. But the problem is the software. The software is making them work in silos. It, it's making the nurse know that, oh, what did the therapist put me in? I, I don't know, I need to do 43 clicks to get there and find out what the therapist put for the prior level of function for that patient before coming to the hospital. That's ridiculous. I was frustrated at the hospital. So along with my uh, two co-founders, Matt and Thad, who are right now, uh, who are also the seed investors at right now in Florida. I don't blame them with the weather we have. But um, we started this uh, in October of 2014. And um, earlier this year in 2016, we came out with our MVP and won a five hospital contract with a rehab unit in Arizona. And uh, <clears throat> It goes, thank you, and it goes on to say that how much of the need is there where we started with the therapy services where nursing, therapists, doctors, everybody is able to collaboratively document, and it's not a documentation or archival software. So every one of you might have heard of electronic health records, yes, but 90 plus percent of them are documentation or archival systems. You, you download stuff, you talk about document, no. This one is not just making them document collaboratively, not in silos, but also making sure that it has the intelligence to give them insights into it. So we have a strong team right now, myself, and then we have Matt and, and Thad, who have started a lot of different other companies and have been very successful. And we have a really strong key members. One of them is Edna Novaro right here. Uh, she is one of our product growth specialists. And then we have Nikki Ralston, who is the VP of clinicals. She has 25 plus years of experience in rehab and being a director of therapy, run rehab centers. And then we have Rick Palmer, who is a director of sales, uh, who is in Oklahoma right now. And he, we are just kickstarting, coming out of the private beta and going into the limited availability of the software. Um, so we talked, about, uh, talked a li little bit about the, about the problem. Uh, the, I guess the thing that amplifies rehab space, which actually needs electronic uh, software more than some of the short-term acute care centers is that patients live there longer. They're broken. They're living there 30 days. They're living there 60 days, depending on what kind of injury they have. And they need it more. So when you look at the chart, you'll see that the electronic health record in bigger hospitals have adopted well. Yes, because of Obamacare, because of the subsidies those guys have given but not in the rehab space. So we are trying to get into that opportunity, and believe me or not, the biggest competition for us still is the paper. So uh, without going into too much detail about how do we make revenues or increase revenues or uh, even decrease the cost for our hospitals, I would just say that we, when we went into the, our private, like the first beta hospital, when you just look at the real-time tracking of functional scores, that saved them $10,000 per patient just in having the software there and real-time tracking the functional scores. 
And there are obviously a lot of different advantages. I'll go into it a little bit later, but our solution is software as a service. It's a human-centered solution and based on interoperability in UX. Ben, by quickly. It goes fast. Okay, questions. So our uh, five hospital contracts should be about three quarters of a million annual run rate. Hi, so as an EHR, uh, what are your operating costs? Are you guys processing each uh, claim yourself or are you uh, pushing it out to the existing houses that they already pushed to? Yeah, so we're not a billing company at all, like how most of the electronic health records companies started. We are focused on clinicians and whatever billings are being generated, we can work with any billers. We just push out the clinical documents to them when they need it. It's, uh, we can work with anybody. Strategically, what's your approach with competing with some of the large players in the game, like Epic, for instance? Absolutely. So in the rehab space, Epic and Cerner and some of the bigger um, EHRs have not really focused that much. In fact, if you go to Epic's website, they don't talk about rehab too much, primarily because of Obamacare has been focused on subsidies. And when you look at the foundation of how these EHRs have started, they have started as billing companies. And then the afterthought was, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do something for clinicians. But we are actually work, we are by the clinicians, uh, like Nikki, you saw. We have, we have a panelist about 15 therapists we work with closely, and we work with usability. So we are completely focused on how clinicians use the software. Asking all the questions, because I was looking into this uh, a few months ago. But uh, so, one of the biggest challenges uh, that I saw when I was looking into it was convincing these large institutions to switch from their current software uh, to the new one because they're, they're busy with caring for the patients and now they have to learn a whole new system. Uh, so what is your training and how do you convince these institutions to uh, choose your software? That's actually a fantastic question. Glad you asked. Um, so when you look at some of the com competition in our space, uh, there are companies like Mediware, which are still very siloed completely, and then you have something like Epic. So the average implementation time for a Mediware is like 16 weeks. That's what they, t they talk about. And when you look at Epic, it's about 12 to 18 months, depending on how, what kind of modules you're buying. We are about four weeks. So it just cuts down the entire productivity. And, and in the private uh, beta that we did with the hospital, just for the therapy product, we were about two weeks, right, Edna? Close to that, yeah. I just heard you say that you're wanting to focus on UX as perhaps a way to ease that transition. I heard something earlier, maybe it was from Oren, I can't remember, big UX thing coming up even tomorrow. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Hi, I know a little bit about this space. I was the director of IT for Teladoc. We did a lot of EHR stuff. Yeah. Um, so are you integrating with any, or doing any uh, cross-platform stuff, any HL7? Yeah, kind of so we, we, have a, we have an HL7 engine, so we can integrate. Right now, as, as we speak, we are actually integrating with one of the top five VHRs in the Qt space, because they are sending us the information, but we can integrate with anybody. Perfect. That, that was one of the biggest challenges, was yep. there's all these different standards out there for HRs yep. and finding the, the way to integrate back with them. Yeah, so we have an engine which actually can talk in different formats, too. So if Epic talks in a certain format versus a Cerner, we can, we can easily talk with it. Uh, you talked about uh, generating, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you talked about generating insights and helping the clinicians and everyone work more to collaboratively. Can you talk a bit about that since we're not getting like a demo of your platform or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'll give you an example of some of the cases how silos work. So when a, when a, re, when a patient comes into the rehab space, uh, they are staying there, let's say the average length of stay is about 12 to 14 days, and nurses have to do certain things on them. So let's say it's, they have a certain goals for it. And similarly, therapists will have certain goals for the patient to, to get discharged from the hospital at, at the end of the day. What happens today is most of the softwares, nurses do their thing, therapists do their thing, and then doctors have certain things that they have to take care of. 
but nobody's really looking at, well, nursing wants to take care of bathing problem for the patient, and there's an occupational therapist who's also looking at bathing problem, but they're not talking to each other on the software, so they, can't, they have like different goals which can actually conflict and cause medical errors, which is, by the way, the third of the issues here in this industry. In our software, they're kind of forced to look at that collaboration. They can actually see that, oh, a bathing uh, goal was initiated by a nurse. See, the occupational therapist right, has it right in, in front of them and can act, to act on it, can talk to the therapist right then. Thank you.